If I Had a Boat, after James Vincent McMorrow. May bank holiday Monday, the sea all a glitter, when a mast appears before the old fish meal factory. Just browsing, with sun odyssey splayed optimistically behind, glides along, leading the flotilla, slips out of the estuary in perfect sailing conditions. A light sou'westerly raising a series of tiny ripples and a cold breeze in off the river. Friday last, after a decade of imagining, after writing three books of poetry with their many nautical allusions, flares, waves and lines, all written from the banks of terra firma, I struck out for my chance immersion in the pagan boyne via Sunline, with Columba, Collie and Cheshire Bill, Patricia in the background. I clamber on board, slipping and sliding in my inappropriate Clark's brown suede shoes, and like a newborn calf on cement hard yard, I'm lucky not to have fallen overboard even before launching out. The Sambuca slips onto the shingle and is retrieved intact. Suddenly we are on the river, headed out to sea after putting out into deep water and the terrifying memory Anthony Hohe depicted and a personal memory, San Cyprien sur plage and the little cruise bateau headed out to open sea after the sheltered comfort of reeve or canal bank disappears. Consciousness submerged in the unknowingness of fear and near terror thought and the childlike wonder and astonishment. Famine memorial, forced emigration, deportation, John Boyle O'Reilly, tragedy on the water, Vikings. It is three o'clock on the Friday of the bank holiday weekend. Three ships on the horizon loom. Philip Larkins, the north ship, lilts from some recess. Legend. A trip from Liverpool for five ships. Down the Mersey reaches a conclusion. I am returned to shore, intrepid boatman, not unlike Peter and lose a shoe in the glowering boyne that Cheshire Bill fishes out with the adept boating skills of Columba just before it joins the salmon and the netting. Richard, Richard Moore's oil on board nails the view and a reality most shirk. I am soon dashing along the daub and pebble and rack my shell rained upon laces undone. By five I'm back at Tom McDonald's and kindly invited back on board by Skipper Columba from the hundreds milling round and instantly dubbed Huckleberry as I board Sunline from Mikey McMahon's little turn for a second immersion in the Christian Boyne, in an afternoon after a decade dreaming over the melancholic river. Paul points out a turn, flying directly over. We greet each ship and its crew and spectators through lenses view. It is nine o'clock in the morning on the Monday of the Maybank holiday weekend, after just browsing, shockwave, hair razor, Boeing protector, artful dodger, Kalimbo, L, Zuri, Dulamon, not Clanids but Dundalk, provide a flotilla for the five ships, all wooden prow, solid and shiny, all elegant, billowing sails pounding, Brown and white, nondescript, tricolour blowing. The flotilla heads out to sea 
and we head for the dunes. There are only two truths. As Kavanagh, McGahern and Murphy realised homecoming and leaving, arriving and departing, or as Lana Del Rey might sing, we are born to die. I am humming Freddie White's Dry Land from the album Do You Do, Sing It. I'm coming into dry land, I've been a long time at sea. Later that night, after refreshments and toms, we are all in session. No woman, no cry, wails through morns.